Hello, I'm Mary and thank you so much for coming. I pray that as you listen to this video today, your life will not remain the same again. Worthy to be glorified, worthy to be honored. Blessed be your name, mighty God, there's none like you. Forever we give you all the glory and praise. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we have worshipped. Heavenly Father, on this second day, give each one a specific word. Let us have an encounter with your word to rule our world. Let everyone's understanding be open. That every form of ignorance will be shattered. In Jesus' mighty name. You will have to pray that God will give you a personal word. You can be in church and not be in touch with God. Many come to church, but they don't get in touch with the word of God. It's not where you're seated that matters, it's where your heart is that matters. You can be very close in sitting and not your heart be far in sitting. The religious said it was at the gallery when he had an encounter in Kenehegi's meeting. It was not close to the altar. It is not how close and proximity you have to the altar. It's where your heart is. Lord, I didn't come here for fun. I came for an encounter with reality. Let the word be revealed to me that will change my own situation. Go ahead and talk to God in the name of Jesus. Are you speaking to God from the depth of your heart? I desire an encounter with your word. For a change of story and a change of situation. Open your mouth and talk to God in the name of Jesus. I desire an encounter with your word. For a change of story this moment. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray the Holy will breathe upon this word. In Jesus' mighty name. I'm taken before you have your seats. I've said the message in Isaiah chapter 60. I'll read 1, 2, and 15, just for time's sake. Arise, shine. The message I said that you can record from here. For the light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon who? Upon you. May God's glory come upon you right now. He yeah. said, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. It's already happening. Things are not working globally. And gross darkness, the people, it's already happening. Not that it's already on. This is a prophetic agenda. You don't pray against it. But the Lord shall arise upon you. In the midst of hardship, God's glory will be seen upon you. Yeah. No, bring it back. I'm not done. Verse 2, we are not through. But the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen. What? Upon thee. Verse 15. Verse 15. Whereas thou was forsaken and what? Hated. That no man went through thee. They look at you as an outcast. They make as passions on you. But he said, I will make thee. That means your making is of God. People look at you. They don't want to even pass the street you are passing. But it is ending right now. As I make thee an eternal excellence, I will make not man. When God is your maker, nobody cannot make you. May you today be made by God right now. A joy of many generations. Wherever men have despised you, before this meeting is over, in that area you have a miracle. In the very area where men make mockery of any of us, in the name of Jesus, there shall be a miracle before this week is over. In that area where men say, forget him, forget her, that is the same area God will make you a showpiece on the earth. I'm decreed based on God's word, it will not fail in the name of Jesus. Somebody's amen is already confirming a testimony. In the precious name of Jesus. Everywhere you are forsaken, God is going to make you a showpiece on the earth. And so shall it be. Say, I receive it. Say it one more time. 
Personalize it. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Give him a big, 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 big hand. You may be seated. Succeeding in hardship. This is part two because part one was taken yesterday. Anybody who missed the teachings of today has missed a lot. Many are waiting for only Sunday. But funny enough, <laughs> they read teachings at weekdays. Deep teachings. This is the best time to be alive. The best time to be alive is now. Because hardship is not new. You will appreciate light when there's darkness. The world will appreciate the church now more than ever before. Before this time, Jesus is as poor as a church rat. Through? Are they saying so now? No. Now they even say, don't mind these church people. But before now, people pass, they, they look at the church as a place where it's for the refrains. The people cannot succeed in life anymore. But today, they don't mind the church people. Don't mind them. Before, all you see in the church is bicycle. You won't see any car. They have bicycle park. They don't have car park. No, you won't see any church with car park. It's bicycle park. Today, what do they have? Car park. Car parks. Parks. And the church is not the building. It's you and I. You will be the nest that the world will look at. Where we read in Isaiah chapter 6, they say, God darkness shall cover the earth. So Isaiah 6, the 2, verse 2. It is a prophetic agenda, so there's no point praying about it. All you need to do is to be, know how what to do to be exempted. Israel was in Egypt where there was hardship. In Genesis chapter 47, 15, 16, and 27. He said, and when money failed in the land of Egypt. So money failing is not new. We say when money failed. <laughs> Are you getting me? Money failed then. So naira failing now to dollar is not new. When money failed in the land of Egypt, in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, give us bread for why should we die in their presence for the money failed. So it is not new. And Joseph said, give your cattle and I'll give you for your cattle if money what? Failed. Is that true? And Israel dwelled in the land of where? Where did they dwell? Where money failed? Read the Bible. Where did they dwell? In Egypt? The same place where money failed? No, get it. Where did money fail? And where did Israel dwell? The same Egypt. Now listen. In the country of Goshen, there's a way you get blessed. The environment you stay, they call it country. I said, Canaan land now is a country. Retention camp is a country. Our own will soon be a country. And they had what? Read your Bible. And they had what? When money failed, they had possessions. And grew and multiplied what? I don't care what is happening in your country. You will not be a victim and a part of it. In the precious name of Jesus. In the time of hardship, the church will always triumph. It said in Isaiah chapter 2, 2 and 3. He said, and it shall come to pass in the last days, which is this period, that the man of Lord shall be exalted, shall be established on the top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall do what? Flow. And many people shall come, and many shall go and say, Come ye, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from where? Jerusalem. He said, Zion will become a place of envy. A place of spend of glory and dignity. And to be a center of attraction. Where people come and find out what is happening here. That's what they are doing now. They say, how come the church is prospering when things are getting tough? Say so here. Before, it is government that helped church. True? When poverty was there. But now, church is helping what? We are donating for relief. True? Before, the government would not send relief to the church. Now, the church is sending relief to what? Government. Don't you like it? Are you getting what I'm talking about? Before, children go to government schools. Now, government go to what? 
Christian schools. Covenant University is rated the best university today in Nigeria and West Africa. Yeah, we have that. And seven best Africa. Before it was also, before it was the government schools. Today is the government Christian schools. Are you not happy? They will come and ask us, how do you do making it happen? You heard that our secondary school is the best in Nigeria through? That's a Christian school. The next thing that will happen in the world shall come from you. He said, we are the light of the world, not light of the church. Matthew 5, 14. We are the salt of the earth, verse 13. A city is heat that cannot be hid. So we are going to be trailblazers. We are going to be the center of what? Attraction. Pathfinders. Pace setters. That the world will begin to look at us, aspire at us. Stars in every sector of human endeavor. So rejoice. Be excited that you are born in due season. Shout hallelujah. But how you think determines how far you go in life. It's as he thinketh in his heart. So is he. Proverbs 23 verse 7. God's agenda is indestructible. But the only thing that can limit you is your mind. It's what? Your mind. When you live in the consciousness of his word, it helps the way you reason plan, and program your life. Whatever your professional career is, you are destined to succeed in hard times. You will succeed. And remember, there's a divine purpose for every one of us in life. He said, before you were born, Jeremiah 1, 5, I ordained you what? A prophet. So everyone has a divine agenda. My duty and your responsibility is to discover and recover our destiny. He said, before you were born, I ordained you. So there is no non-entity in God's kingdom. He said, before you were born, I separated you for something to make your showpiece on the earth. Jeremiah 1.5. He said, before I formed thee the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth of the womb, I sanctified thee. And ordained thee a prophet unto what? Nations. That means you are separated for something. A discovery of that purpose is what makes life colorful on the earth. Are you getting me, sir? So how do I succeed in hard times? That's what we are going to find out. How? Because there's hard times. Now, how do I succeed? Is it just succeeding in hard times? Is your church succeeding in hard times? Then <laughs> there's no reason why you should not succeed. If you know how to get to a destination, you don't panic. Because you know the road. True? How do I succeed? What? In our times. I'll take three today. And I'll take four tomorrow. So here. There's no way you've been to this meeting, tomorrow's meeting, and never talk of hard times. No way. If you talk, then you're not going to, you're not putting to practice what I'm going to teach. How? No, hard times is not new. It's not what? It's not new. It's not, Abraham succeeded. Jacob succeeded. Isaac succeeded. Joseph succeeded. Then why are you complaining? Your founding father succeeded in hard times. I'm succeeding in hard times. Oh, you in hard times. Am I talking? This just succeeded. So there's something we know that is making us what? Be successful in hard times. I've been shouting that hard times will come long ago. How many of you were in this show when I said that things will get tough? How many of you are here? Okay, so it's not new to me. And I said, in the midst of that, you see this church prosper. True? Are we prospering now? This church is prospering now, now than ever before. And don't be surprised, not because of your offering or any man's offering. It's something we know what to do. So keep your, take your seat belt, tighten your seat belt, sit well. How to succeed hard times? Number one, utilize your gifts and talents. Utilize your gifts and what? Talents. To utilize your gifts and talents is to recognize and develop your unique potentials for the benefit of humanity. In Matthew chapter 25, 14 and 15, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. 
Shout it 15 together. One to go. And unto one he gave five talents. To another two. To another one. To every man. Take note of what? Including you. According to his several ability. And straightway took his journey. So there is no ungifted person. Every one of us have something to offer our world. Are you getting me, sir? Everyone. You are a divine creation designed for something specific. You are created with specific gifts and talents. God has a plan for your life. You are not a biological accident. Are you hearing me, brothers? God has deposited in you several gifts and talents. Every one of us. You may be gifted in interpersonal skills such as communication, leadership, everybody, etc. There, there are people who have interpersonal skills. Now, do you know if you keep 50 people, just 50, and don't appoint any leader and say, stay together in this organization, it will not take one month. The leader among them will come out. The leader, he will lobby. He will he or she will begin to show the capabilities that is in him as a leader. So that person already has it. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Glory to God. You may have creative abilities in you in music, arts, writing, design, etc. They are who are very creative. We are very what? Creative. They say like this, they can paint you without in two minutes. Some have intellectual abilities such as critical thinking that when they think, they don't think like other people. They look at things very well. They, say they, can, they can critically think. Are you going to say now? They prefer solutions to problems. They, they are problem solvers, etc. They, are inter- they have some straight abilities inside them. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, there are some that are gifted with physical abilities in athletics, craftsmanship, etc. Every gift must be given attention to. God expects you to develop and grow your gifts and talents. There is nobody on earth that doesn't have a gift. No purpose has a future without developing his gifts and talents. Are you getting what I'm saying now? You are gifted. You are the one who does not know. There's something in you. Are you getting me? You may not be good in academics will be very good in the physical gift. There is nobody who is not gifted. But our problem is everybody wants to do a white collar job. Are you getting where we miss it? So here. Hey, to every gift, there is a what? A required skill. To every gift, there is a required what? Skill. To every gift and talent, there is a required skill. How well you develop your gifts and talents will determine the quality of your output. When you develop your gifts, you become sought after. May the world look for you. I said, may the world look for you. It is those who have developed their gifts and talents that will be announced to their world. Very soon the world will know that you exist. It says, see it a man diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. Proverbs 2, verse 29. You can't succeed in hard times without utilizing your gifts and talents. When you have what people need, they will run after you. Do you hear me? I say, when you have what people need, they will run what? For instance, look at Joseph. This man had a gift that Pharaoh began to look for him in Genesis chapter 41. The gift he had was too loaded. It was a man who can look at your face and know what you're going through and tell you how to come out of it. He can just look at you and say, oh, why are you depressed? You don't need all that. That's why you knew the butler and the baker what they were going through. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And the gift brought you, your gift will soon bring you to a great man. 
He said, must give to make it room for him and bring get him before great men. So what you bring before great people is not your certificate, it's your gift. First. So here. Now look at the man David. David came before King Saul as a musician and a songwriter. He had the gift of playing harp that evil spirit can live when he plays. And you get what I'm saying now? That was what brought him to limelight before kingship. So here. Are you hearing me? There was a man called Bezali in Exodus chapter 35, 30 to 35. This man was the best class man in his time. That God said to Moses, there's a man called Bezali so loaded that would be able to do this thing for you. Nothing happens by chance. Nothing happens what? You cannot succeed in hard times without developing what God has deposited in you. No. Our problem is, instead of looking inward, we are looking outside. Are you getting what I'm saying? I, hello. I pray whatever God has for you, your eyes will open to see it. Yeah. Shout aloud, amen. Yeah. Shout aloud, amen. Yeah. A, young, a man called Belkassin, one of the greatest neurosurgeons in the world, this man had a gift. Had a what? Gift. He had passion for human. And the gift in him began to announce him. He is somebody who cannot see and stand where children are sick. And that just began to spare, spawn him. That it's not enough to be a neurosurgeon. He had a special gift of love for children. Are you get what I'm saying? Okay. There was a young man, when he was small, he had some deformity. He had a deficiency in growth. So they took him from Argentina to his country called Spain and registered him in a club called Barcelona. This young man with his deformity, they began to treat him. And he was not tall, short. They didn't expect him to grow. So because of his gift, of how he was rolling the what they call football, the gift began to make everybody say, who is this small boy? Who can roll the letter? And then he began to develop himself. Today is one of the most accredited multi-billionaires in dollars, millionaires in dollars, in football called Lionel Messi. Many don't know about Ronaldo. Ronaldo had a heart problem when he was young. Go and read about him. He had a heart issue when he was small. And Ronaldo was a skillful footballer in Portugal and began to develop his skill. That was what made him not school. There are those who school will make. There are those who their craftsmanship will make. But everybody has something in him. So here. Are you, talk, are you getting what I'm talking about? Not all of us we made with school. Find out what you are unique at doing. Effortlessly. That is what will make you specific. Special to the world. So here. Spend time in developing your skill. Spend what? Invest in materials or whatever it takes to develop your gifts and skills. Season of preparation is not a wasted time. Are you getting me? Jesus took 30 years to prepare. How many years? 30 years to prepare. That may look like a wasted time. But in three and a half years, the world has not recovered it today. Moses took 80 years to prepare. Moses was keeping sheep, keeping what? Of his father-in-law. Dedicatedly, skillfully, that keeping people will not be a problem to him. To succeed in hard times, it is a season of preparation. It is a season of what? He said, and Jotham became mighty. Because he prepared his ways before the Lord is God. Second Chronicles 27 verse 6. God will soon announce it to your world. That amen is too weak. First and foremost, discover your gift and what? Talent. And then sharpen it with your skill and begin to develop yourself. That way the whole world will be looking for you. The whole world will be what? Looking, they will be looking for you. Are you getting me? Are you hearing me? Don't try to be like somebody else. That's why we miss it. Find that your own unique thing you have and sharpen it. You'll be marketable any day, any time. No hardship can stop a man who has developed himself. 
Steps to utilizing your gifts and talents. Steps to utilizing your gifts and what? Talents. What are the steps? A. Identify your strength and passion. Identify your what? First Corinthians chapter 12, 4 to 11. When you get home, you read. And Matthew 25, verse 15. It's a gift to every man's several worth. Ability. So identify it first. What is my strength? What is my what? Strength. What is what? My strength. Are you getting me? Identify your strength. Now let me say this to you. I'll be very, I simplified it to a very elementary form. Amongst pastors, now they bring men of God together and they say, now let's praise God. My strength is not in singing. My strength is in dancing. I wouldn't want to go and sing like the other person. I would dance. Everybody would stop, praise, and look at me. That is my strength. What is your own strength? I'm not using physical things to illustrate. You know that you're not good in mathematics, but when you talk, your English is so sound. Don't go and try to solve mathematics. Sharpen your English. That when you are speaking, everybody will stand to say, who is this person? Identify your strength. Identify what? And passion. Billy Graham never prayed for the sick. In fact, there was no crusade. Billy Graham said the sick is healed. But when Billy Graham was alive and he's talking, <laughs> you'll be hell spell bound till he finishes. He talks like an orator. You will know that this man was a, like someone who would have been a poet, but now came to the gospel. He would just be talking, talking, telling so, talking, talk. You just hell spell bound. That was his strength. And he said, John 3, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish. But do you know, in Russia, it, it did something. Something happened. You would just be talking like, are you going to say now? And then you'll be helped. That was his strength. He did not go like on a robust to go and pray for sick. He did not go like a trukuman to pray for the sick. Don't go to another man's area. Stay in your area of strength. Stay here. Identify it first. That this is my strength. Then sharp. B. Develop your gifts, skills, and talents through practice and training. Develop your gifts, skills, and talents through what? Practice and training. Training, I'm talking about both formal and informal. Both formal and what? Informal. 1 Timothy 4.14, 2 Timothy 1.6, and 2 Timothy 2.15. 1 Timothy 4.14, neglect not the gift that is in thee. Don't neglect it. Are you going to say now? Develop it. Don't neglect the gift. Develop it. It says, study to show yourself what? A workman that needed to be assured. So go for courses. Go for informal training. Are you going to say now? Take up courses. Go to the internet. Look at the area where you can sharpen your skill in the area of what you are doing. So here. See. Seek opportunities to serve with your gifts and talents. Seek opportunities to serve with your gifts and what? Talents. First Peter 4 10. As every man had received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good servants of the manifold grace of God. Shout hallelujah. Use that your gift to do what? Serve God. The more you serve with your gift, the more God will give you more. Anything you use to serve God, God sharpens it. Are you going to now? Glory to God. Hmm? If you use your brain to serve God, he will give you wisdom. If you give your strength to serve God, he will give you health. Is that true? So use the gift you have to do what? Serve God. D. Continuously seek divine guidance. Continuously seek what? Divine guidance. Psalm 32 verse 8. I will instruct thee and teach thee the way which I shall go and I will guide thee with my shout hallelujah. I shout a big Hallelujah. Number two. Number one. What did we say? Utilize your gifts and what? Talents. Number two, be a problem solver. 
if you want to succeed in hard times. Be a problem solver. So I hear. Finding solutions to a problem around you is the fastest way to ending hardship. A problem solver can never suffer hardship. Problems are opportunities for your next phase of lifting. You'll be lifted. Uncommon promotion, breakthroughs, and favor are the words of solving problems. Prosperity is created by solving problems. You are only paid for the problems you solve. Therefore, if you must be exempted from hardship, you must be a problem solver. You must be a what? Joseph solved problem for Pharaoh. He made him a prime minister. Is that true? True? Are you hearing me? Daniel solved a problem for King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon in Daniel chapter 2. Then, uh, that of Joseph and David in Genesis chapter 41. The more problems you solve, the more money you make. Hello. For instance, doctors solve medical problems. Dentists solve teeth-related problems. Mechanics solve car problems. Mothers solve emotional problems. You solve what? Ministers of the gospel solve spiritual problems. Everything created by God is to solve a problem. Your rewards in life are determined by the kinds of problems you are willing to solve. Many are poor because they fail to recognize the problem close to them that needs to be solved. May your eyes be open to see what you need to solve. Yeah. Solving problems provides income and financial flow. The problems you solve determine your level of income. Are you hearing me? When you solve big problems, they pay you what? Big money. You solve little problem, they pay what? For instance, now, you open gate and close gate, they'll pay you poor money. Ask me why. It's not a problem. They can decide to install the machine next day and use the remote to open it. The problem you're solving is not challenging. Is that what? So they pay you anyhow. But if you stay and detect when a criminal is coming five miles to the place, you are a gatekeeper, but the problem you're solving is bigger than just opening gate and closing gate. Are, are you going to answer now? More problems you solve, more money you make. Keys to solving problems. Keys to solving what? A. Think deep. Think what? That is, think multidimensionally. Think what? Don't be fixed in solving problems. Think like this. This way, this way, this way. Tax your brain. Begin to think, if this one, I apply this one, it doesn't work. I apply this one, it will work. This will work. Before you know it, one will work. B, consult the Holy Spirit. Consult who? 1 Corinthians 2.10. But God has revealed unto us by his Spirit. For his Spirit says, to hear the deep things of God. Learn to invest quality time in the secret place with God. When a problem comes, Ask the Holy Spirit, what must I what? Do. Today, I was talking to some engineers and while they were talking, I said, you are social engineers and the rest of them. They were trying to tank a very heavy object on the roof of the car and so they were thinking how they would do that they have to meet the, the company that did the roof so whether this object can hang on the roof, which is very heavy. So, I saw how they were thinking and thinking and cracking their brains. I said, the problem with us is that we always think just what we are taught in school. I said, is that all we need to be doing? I looked at the architect. I said, is that all you do? Everything they taught in school, that's what I think. And I said, what is the principle of crane? The principle of crane, you see a long arm 
carrying a big object, and yet the thing is not, it's not heavy. Through? See crane. You see crane. Once heavy part here, then the crane principle carrying the big object. I say, open the, take the principle of crane and hang that thing on the tip and look at a heavy, heavy joint where you can fix it there. Then thinking of how you now hang it on the roof. I said, don't hang it on the roof. Just take the crane principle and create something that can... They were looking at me. But they went to school. I said, just, just hang that thing. It's all hang on the roof. Hang it, since it's heavy, with the crane principle. Crane carries big object with one small vehicle like thing down. But it, you see big blocks to carry it up. True? I have not seen crane before. It just carry a big object and this long arm is long. Then a vehicle like thing is here. True? True. That's, it's, it's the same principle. Just stretch whatever you want to use and hang that thing. So hang on the roof. I let it carry the heavy load and think of something you construct to enter on the wall. I'm not going to understand what I'm talking about. They were looking at me like this. If now I was to work in the construction company, <laughs> the whole money would be paid to me. Because I've solved a problem. And who's giving me the idea? The Holy Spirit. You're a believer. Stop going to work. Just read paper. Do what they taught you in school. Look at Daniel chapter 2 verse 16. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time. That he would show the king what? The interpretation. Give me time. Who did you go to consult? The Holy Spirit. You cannot consult the Holy Spirit and be stagnated in life. And there's a very simple way to consult him. I've talked about over over He would tell you exactly what to do. Are you getting what I'm saying? Or you begin to sing and begin to worship. He would tell you exactly what to do. Look, school is calendar. Education is continuous. Always consult the Holy Ghost to be educated, not to be schooled. School is calendar. Four years, you're graduated. But education is for life. There are many people who have gone to school and are not educated. Do you hear me? They have PhD, but don't have any education. They have certificate without any result. Many are confusing going to school with solving problems. That's why we have many unemployed graduates. You will not be one of them. Because what you're hearing will change your lifestyle. C. Solve the most difficult problems in any organization or the society. Solve the most difficult problems in any organization or what? Society. What? As I solve the most difficult problems in any what? Organization or what? Society. What others are unwilling and incapable of doing, take it up and solve. Take it up and what? Take time to study your neighborhood, city, organization, country, nations all over the world. And begin to solve what? Problems. So here. Solution-oriented people are most are the most valuable in any organization or society. They are positive and constructive in their thinking. They don't look for who to blame. They prefer solutions. They prefer what? Try to see opportunities in every situation. Always be positive in your thinking, in your what? Let me say this to all of us. Stop talking about problems. If you're in this church and hear you talk about problems, you are very stupid. Identifying the problem is not intelligence. Finding solution to the problem is. For instance, not, what is the music you are sitting down to say? Naira, Naira is high now to dollar. What is it? You are stupid because you can't change it. It will, it will increase. They've taken loan, so they will increase the, they will devalue it again. It will, see, it, it will increase because the more you take loan, the more you devalue your currency. So what is the reason you're talking about it? 
It's no sense. Makes no sense. Now, begin to think, how do I make it with this devaluation? So here. That's intelligence. That's what? Now, you can't be doing things depending on everything on foreign exchange. For instance, you're a designer. Let me be very practical. You're a designer. This is not the time to begin to import suits. This is the time to create how you can sew suits in Nigeria. With the international standard. True? Now, listen carefully. Sitting down to now say, see, I bought this suit. This suit now is $100. That is 167000 for one suit. People will not buy. It's only people that can buy that. So it doesn't make sense. Now, how can I sew that high quality suit in Nigeria? To make me a millionaire. How can I use our local fabrics? To start designing things of international standard. Now, so it's an opportunity for someone to solve what? A problem. Sir, here. Are you getting what I'm talking about? Don't find fault, find a remedy. It is not money you need first. That's why we miss it. Listen. <laughs> Prosperity and abundance, they are not found. And money, they are found in your gift and talents that God brought to you with to the air to solve a problem. Avoid procrastination. Your prosperity is inside you. Is where? Listen, if I have money, I would have been rich. It's a lie. You don't need money to be rich. You need to solve problems to be rich. I wish I could have money. Anybody who says so is very dull. The first sign of a dull person is I wish I have money. Okay, countries have been borrowing, including your country. Are there some problems? Borrowing to it cannot it, getting borrowing money cannot solve your problem. No, the world does not come out of challenges through borrowing. You can't. Since nations have been borrowing, no nation has borrowed and came out of their problems. Not one. Because money does not solve money problem. Are you getting what I'm saying? Money does not solve money problems. No. Now. If you doubt it, all the men who have stolen money all over the world and have money, cash, they end up being poor. Why? After they leave office. Why? It is not through intellectual ability. Money does not appreciate or increase when mental system is low. Are you getting me? So take responsibility and provide solutions to end hardship in your life. May hardship come to an end in your life. Amen. Shout a better amen. amen. As a hardship will end in your life. Amen. So number one, look at the talents and gifts you have. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And begin to develop those talents and gifts. The world will begin to look for you. Then two, look for a problem to solve. Any problem you solve, they will pay you for it. There's money in everybody's pocket looking for who will solve problem for them to pay for it. Through? Am I talking? Are you hearing me? There's a state called Bayasa in Nigeria. They don't have good drinking water because of the nature of the environment. Their drinking water is very poor. Now, if I have good water by any means in that place, will the water sell? I've solved their problem. Do they have fish in, in middle bed up? No. In the northern part of Nigeria. Do they have fish? Only a very few places. They have more meat. Through? So fish farm to make profit is not in River State. It's in the north. Because the north has like to eat fish, but they don't have fish. So if, if you want to open a fish farm, I should go and open it in the northern part of Nigeria. Because that is the place where they don't have fish. So if I breed fish there, the market is hot. Breeding fish in River State, they already have in the water side. <laughs> I'm solving what? The problem. Sir, here. Does Abuja have any fishing place? No. But if I have a fish farm in Abuja, it will sell. But if I have fish farm in Lagos, it may not sell like that because lagoon is there. So you know where the problem is and what? Solve it.
Finally, number three. Are you blessed today? How many of you have talents? How many of you have gifts? Okay, what have you done with these things? You are like the, one, the man with the one talent. <laughs> he very did. Do you have gift? Do you have talent? What have you done with it? You are looking for a job. <laughs> you are looking for... Say the truth, you have submitted application everywhere. <laughs> Am I talking? But what makes people is not job. Job can make you. Job would never make you say I must work. It's work that makes people not job. Job is what you are trained to do. Work is what you are created to do. Job is what you were trained to do. Work is what you are, you are born to do. You do it effortlessly. You were born to do a work. But they train you to do a job. <laughs> I went to school. I have, that's, they train to do that job. But the work is the thing that just flows. It just, we can, we can, that. You just, it just flows. <laughs> you have said now? And what you are born to do is what will make you. Not what you are trained to do. So here. Train me, train you to be a footballer. Where you are not born to be a footballer. You just, you can say this are the trap ball. This are the, don't, now. So tell you how it is. There are people on television, they play with ball like this. They don't play football, though, but they will do. They, they show them and they give them a word. Have you seen them before? I don't know if you love, love, watch football. They don't play football, though, but they will take the ball and dance, do like this. <laughs> but they don't play football. They were trained to do that. So they don't make money. But those who are born to play football, they pay them every week. Some of you have not seen it, eh? There, those, those watch Super Sports, if you're a footballer. There are people who, they play ball like this, they do like this. They don't play football, though. They, Women are men. They will roll the ball. They will dance with it. They will sit down. They will put it between their legs. They will go back. They will... But they've never entered the field to play ball. <laughs> they use it for entertainment. They were trained for that. No money. But the ones who are born to play ball, they pay them thousands every week, some millions every week. Job is what you are trained to do. Work is what you are born and created to do. That's why Jesus never said, I must job my job. He said, I must work. <laughs> are you getting me? All of you wake up Monday morning and don't feel like going to work. You are doing a job. You are not working. Have you ever worked Monday morning? You say, well, I the Monday again. <laughs> you are doing a job. That is not work. Shout hallelujah. Finally, number three. Wait. To come out of hardship. Associate with the wise. Associate what? I close with this one. Are you blessed today? He that walketh with the wise shall be wise. A companion of fools, mumus shall be mumus. A companion of fools shall be destroyed. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were companions. They were what? If you read the book of Daniel, chapter 2, 48, 49, Daniel, chapter 3, verse 30, they appointed them top leaders in Babylon because it was an association of people who sharpened their brains. As I communicate with you, the company you keep will either make you or marry you. Stop associating with poor minds. With what? If you want to be wealthy, don't hang around the poor. Poverty has to do with mentality. That's what I mean. That you don't have money in your pocket does not mean you're a poor man when your mind is upgraded. From the day I had no dime, I said I'm one of the richest preachers. Mon Listen, wealth is not a function of how much you have. It's a function of a mental capacity. There are poor who have money and they're poor. And the poor who don't have money, they're rich. You will know this man will be rich. I knew I was going to be wealthy from the day I had no dime. Don't hang around a person with poverty worth mentality. Are you hearing me? Be in the company of great thinkers. 
Let me tell you a life story. There were three young men. They were former employees of PayPal. They were PayPal employees. These three young men. PayPal is a, a payment gateway company. In America. And they are some parts of the world. These three young men, they are Chad Huli, Steve Chin, and Jared Karim. Huli studied design at the Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Chin and Karim studied computer science together at the University of Illinois, Urbana Chapin. Huli and Chin developed the idea for YouTube during the early months of 2005 after they had expressed difficulty sharing videos that had been shot at a dinner party at Chain's apartment in San Francisco. Karim said, the inspiration for YouTube came from the Super Bowl show. Karim could not easily find video clips of the show online. This led to the idea of a video sharing site. So they created a video sharing site, called it YouTube which was later bought by Google for about $1.65 billion in Google stock. Three of them were friends. We are what? Working in the same company. And they were brains. Do you know who you talk with affect your mind? That's why when stupid people talk with you, they affect your mentality. Are you getting mind who you are talking to? If you talk to a mumu, you end up as a mumu. If you notice, look at them, the three of them. These are three young men. I, see, I don't say you should go and wear your ringo. <laughs> but these three young men, we are working in pay what? They are working in PayPal. They are working in what? They are the founders of YouTube. Two of them were working together. This one said, I can design. They one said, I'm a computer scientist. Do you understand? You know what you need. You, should, you are a sound architect. What are you relating with the draft man? Give the draft man job, but that cannot be your closest friend. He will bring you from your super design to draftmanship. You know draft man? You know draft man? The ones that can duplicate the... <laughs> they don't have them there again because of computer. You know, they used to have draft men. You are a sound lawyer. Your closest friend is a, is a, is, is a court clerk. He will bring you to a court clerk level. Iron, sharpen it. Iron. Proverbs 27, verse 17. It's not pride. If nobody is challenging you, don't be a friend to anybody. It's not pride. It's not what? It's not pride. If people around you can't challenge you, leave them alone. Because the company you keep determines what motivates and accompanies you. Do you know there are people from morning to night, all they talk about is man and woman. From morning to night. No productive thing in their life. If you converse with them from morning to night, all they open their mouth to say to you, man, woman, man, woman, man, woman, man, woman. You, your mind will be affected. Even if you want to shift them, they'll come back. Oh boy, that, that baby. Eh? That babe. That babe. You can't talk about babe and not be a baby. <laughs> no productive talk. Check your friends. Now, check. Who is challenging you? If you notice, the whole wealthy people, they associate with one another. Just notice. Warren Buffett, Elliot Mox, name them. Name which will they associate. When they want to meet, they meet at that class. You won't see any mumu amongst them. <laughs> Am I talking to you? Eh? Now, to tell such as powerful, when Neyman, Messi, and Ronaldo were playing in La Liga, the three of them were at their best. Because 
Mercy was challenging Naaman as a young boy to grow. The moment Naaman went to Saudi Arabia, did you hear him again? Association. Not to challenge him there. He is lost. Nobody hears him again. If you think association has no power. When he was close with the best, it made him to be the best. There were times PSG played with Barcelona and they won them 4 0. Neymar single handedly led the team to win PSG 5 6. That was how PSG bought him in the second leg. They coalesced 4 4, 1 4 5. 5-5, five, 6-5 five, five also. With him alone as the most skillful player. PSG, after that match, they were buying him. <laughs> From there, he now said, money. He now money does not bring money. Do you see now? He left his skill and went for what? Money. He missed it. If I get money, all this papa, they talk. You go see poor. Don't be poor in Jesus' name. Amen. Stop focusing on money. Focus on this since I'm talking about. Look at my situation with Oedipo. Is Oedipo giving me money? No, but my situation with him is what is challenging me to shift. You can associate with great minds through their materials, through their worth. For instance, books. Buy their books. Listen to them on the internet. The people you want, go to the internet. Go to, don't go to the internet to be listening to jokes. Go to the internet to see the kind of people who you want, you are aspiring to be like. Listen to them. See what they do. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Are you hearing me? Well, what have I said? To certain hard times. I've said number one, utilize your gifts and worth. Utilize your worth. Is there anybody who is gifted? Is there anybody who is gifted? Are you gifted? So what are you doing with it? Are you talented? Are you talented? What are you doing with it? Two, solve problems. Solve what? Am I solving problems? Yes. Anytime you come here, you want to come back. Because I don't come careless on this pulpit. True? I prepare to give you good menu. So you come back. I solve your problems. Spiritual problems. If I stop solving problems, you won't come again. But you keep coming as long as solving problems. And I will not stop solving. So I don't just preach. I make sure I tell you something tomorrow. You come back. In fact, you carry your friends again tomorrow and come. Is this school? No. Do you, have you ever looked at my certificate from, from uh, Bible school? No. If I come, I say, I have A. In omelettes, he says, sir, we are not here for omelettes. Tell us what we need to do in life now. Nobody knows my certificate. You have carried your paper, submitted everywhere. Go now and solve problems. Finally, associate with the wise. Rise to your feet. Shout hallelujah. Did we talk money here? Did we measure money here? So coming at hardship, money they last in. What is the last in? Are you getting me? Prosperity is not just giving money. There are things you do to provoke them giving. Are you going to now? I will tell you when that time comes, giving. But that's not the first thing. Many people tell, if I just, if I, you have been giving, you are not prospering because there are other things that determines your prosperity. If you give and not solve problem, will you prosper? No. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. Today we had Chinese came, ministers, missionaries, and their leader, who can speak English, said, I listened to you in China, and your message, he quoted the exact message he listed. He said, that's the message that I said, I must come with this team to Nigeria to see you and see other great men of God. Are you going to say now? He said, this message, when I heard it, I said, China needs this kind of message. And they were interpreting to them in technology. In their ears. He said, that was the message I heard. I said, what? Somebody preached like this? This is what China needs. People are listening to me all over the world. That's a Chinese, though, not, a, 
not Nigerian, I don't mean Nigerian minister. These are pure Chinese people. You see them tomorrow. Pure Chinese people. Solving what? Just imagine if I don't solve problem, I just come here. All I tell you is, praise the Lord. Somebody shout here. And that's all I do on the altar. Baby, you know, we travel. So, somebody, you know, we travel. Glory to God. New York. Oh, my God. From New York, we, we were able to stop over in Amsterdam. Can you say that? Hey, baby, am I talking? That's what I, you, somebody will come to church to hear. The man will leave the church and say, that man is not a serious man. He's not a serious man. How can all he's talking about is his wife on the altar? Is he a serious man? They don't, they don't, they don't get wives. They ought to have their wives. They came to church. You're not be talking about your own wife. Not, not unless you will be a woman. They say, see this man. He came to church. He's not telling us how we will take him out of hardship in Nigeria. He's busy telling us his wife, his wife. We are, what, what, what is what? Then one want to go to school. Say, where be Amsterdam? Now, where are person Amde? <laughs> because the woman in the village doesn't know what's Amsterdam. He say, Am. Now, Am, not be where person they carry hammer inside Dam. Hmm. Please, get serious. Get what? There's nobody in this assembly or Yadimi has any excuse to fail. There's something in you. There's something what? There's something inside you waiting for expression. The prayer prays, Lord, that talent I did not see, show it to me now. That gift in me, that what? Gift in me that is at the line dormant. I see grace to bring it out. The world will look for you. The world what? There's something in me that has been dormant. Lord, in case I don't know, Show it to me now. Go ahead and pray that prayer in the name of Jesus. Begin to talk to yourself in the name of Jesus. La cote breke dia kase kotale gria. E kratole gesizalo breke tia kotale bre dia kase kotale bre dia. Sasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasasas
Because they are not used to carrying cash. They have money, but they don't carry cash. We're in a cash society. We are already carrying big money. They say, now nah, you get money. Oh. But the invisible is what creates the wealth. The invisible. I pray today you will never be stranded again. Yeah. You begin to utilize what God has given to you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And not one person at the sound of my voice will remain average. Yeah. You are going to pray over the communion. The communion today will be different. You are not just going to pray, oh God, heal me. You are not. You are not sick again. You are going to pray that every form of spiritual blindness be destroyed. Be what? Luke chapter 24, 30, 31. It said, it came to pass as they sat at meat with him, they took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. And their eyes were what? That eye is not only about physical eyes. It's not, they were not blind. But they lack on the Lord, today communion, break every form of ignorance in my life. Let my understanding open up. Because I can teach like this. If he doesn't have understanding, he can just copy notes and still go back to somebody look for a job. Oh. Look for a job. I don't submit application for seven places. He will not go back and look inwards. What is it that makes me who I am? Are you getting me? Lord, the name of Jesus Christ, let every form of ignorance be what? Shattered. Let the eyes of understanding be open. Pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. for yourself in the name of Jesus. Jesus' mighty name. By the leading of the Holy Ghost, Zechariah chapter 9, I'll read verse 11 and verse 12. I'm just on the spot, inspiration by the Holy Ghost. As for thee also, by the blood of the covenant, I have said for the prison out of the people where there's no worth. He said, Turn into strong with you, prisoners of hope, even though I declare render double unto you. Talking about the blood. Anywhere I've been held down with any habit, sickness, including HIV, I must be out of that pit. Anything that's held me captive, both habit, sickness, I must be set free as I partake of the flesh and blood of Jesus. In case you have been held down with drug addiction, today you'll be free. In case HIV has kept you bound, sickness has kept you bound, your liberty must be established. Lord, by the stronghold of the blood, my liberty must be what? Established. Enforce it with so much authority. Now pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. Set your hands. Pray. To, set your hands to the communion and pray in the name of Jesus. So by the blood of Jesus, as I partake of his flesh and blood, everywhere I'll be held captive, the blood of Jesus set me at liberty now and loose by the blood of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. The blood of Jesus loose me now from every captivity. I'm set at liberty by the blood of Jesus. The blood set me free right now. Right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Anyone held down by the devil. Be loose by the blood of Jesus. Anyone marked to be slaughtered by the devil, be set free by the blood of Jesus. 
any terminal disease, HIV, diabetes, name it, cancer, a, name any kind of terminal disease. As the blood comes inside you, you are out of the pit in the name of Jesus. And this same blood become a mark upon you that you become touched not from now. Everyone that bears this blood on you, if we shall pass over, demons shall pass over. Kidnappers, arm robbers will not see you. In the name of Jesus. And so shall it be. In Jesus' mind. Thank you so much for listening to the end. I pray that whatever that you have listened today, you are not going just to keep it, but you are going to do what God has told you through this message. And please, kindly, if you are new here or you are not, I mean, you have not subscribed, kindly just click on the red button below the video and subscribe to this, my channel. And also you can share this video with someone else. Thank you so much and see you in my next video. Bye.